is my honor and the pleasure to be here uh, after uh, HECMA uh, company inviting us for this uh, industrial spot about pharmacokinetic of cartolimus once daily at the graft kidney transplantation. Maintaining long-term graft survival remains a challenge in kidney transplantation and after 10 years of transplantation, the uh, graft survival rate is low, less to less than 60%. The immunosuppressive used in ki adult kidney transplant recipients ranges from calcineurin inhibitors, anti-metabolites, mTOR inhibitor, and steroids. And as regards calcineurin inhibitors, the Crolimus is uh, considered to be now the cornerstone of immunosuppressive therapy. There are different factors which impact on the life of transplant kidney, immunological factors and the non-immunological factors. Among the immunological factors are uh, pregnancy, transplantation, and previous blood transfusion, which results in preformed donor-specific antibodies, and suboptimal exposure and non-adherence to treatment, which result in de novo DSA, and also intra-patient variability of exposure, which all will result in acute, subacute, or chronic rejection. Among the non-immunological factors are donor-related factors, which may be uh, related to age and cardiovascular comorbidities, and recipient-related factors as diabetes, dyslipidemia, hypertension, infection risk, C9, nephrotoxicity, and late graft function. All these factors will result in uh, chronic graft dysfunction. The intrapatient variability of tacrolimus exposure, we have first to understand what is intrapatient variability. Many factors can influence inter and intrapatient variability of tacrolimus exposure. Among these factors are genetic polymorphism, food and drug-drug interaction, race, vasophysiology, non-adherence, gastrointestinal mobility, motility and diarrhea, Metocrit, plasma protein level, time post transplant, and drug uh, formulation. Modifying such factors can help to reduce variability in tacrolimus exposure, but this is not possible for all examples listed. And actually, I will discuss some of these factors for uh, inter and intrapatient variability uh, genetic polymorphism, non adherence, and uh, different drug formulations. First, genetic polymorphism. We have to understand that rapid advancement in genomics and transcriptomics assay has helped our understanding of the role of gene polymorphism and change in the transcription level of genes and its regulation. Relation between altered genetic basis and behavior after drug administration and pharmacogenomics optimization of drug therapy on the basis of each patient's genetic constitution. The single nucleotide polymorphism is an individual based position in the genome that show natural variation in a population. The genes affecting TAC metabolism are cytochrome P3A family enzymes, B glycoprotein, and the RRLGE responsible for the poor oral bioavailability of tacrolimus. Cytochrome B450 is a generic name given to a large family of heme containing enzymes. And these enzymes are involved in the metabolism of xenobiotics, steroidogenesis, and the fatty acid metabolism. The Human Genome Project identified 57 human uh, cytochrome B450 enzymes ordered in 18 families and 43 subfamilies by sequence similarities. The enzymes transforming drugs in humans belong to cytochrome family uh, 1 to 4. And cytochrome 3A subfamily is the most abundant subfamily of cytochrome B450 localized in kidney, intestine, and liver. And the family has four isoforms located on chromosome 7 in the order of cytochrome 3A43, cytochrome 3A4, cytochrome 3A7, and cytochrome 3A5. 30% of cytochrome 3A4 expression is in the liver. The oral tacrolimus is able to be absorbed throughout the gastrointestinal tract from stomach, proximal small intestine, distal small intestine, and colon. And tacrolimus absorption is rapid, but bioavailability is low and variable. 
The oral tacrolimus is a substrate of cytochrome 3A and the B glycoprotein in the gastrointestinal tract. About 15% is lost from oral tacrolimus are lost in the gastrointestinal tract and the gut wall we uh, breathe first pass metabolism about 50% and 10% first pass metabolism in the liver and 25% enters systemic circulation. Modifying delivery by formulation change could affect intrapatient variability. The late intrapatient variability is a major problem in kidney transplant transplantation and the influence of tact trap level at years one, two, and three on both transplant outcome uh, will affect the years from four to six uh, as regard graft survival, this censored graft survival, and patient survival. The high intrapatient variability is a predictor of graft loss and de novo DSA development. On the left side, this censored graft survival is noticed, and on the right side, de novo DSA detection according to efficient of variation is noticed years after transplantation. The genetic polymorphism in cytochrome 3A5 gene causes variability in systemic exposure to tacrolimus. Tacrolimus dose requirements are about 50% greater in patients with cytochrome 3A5 allele, which is called the expressors, than in cytochrome 3A53 homozygotes, which is the non expressor Cytochrome 3A5 and to lesser extent cytochrome 3A4 genetic polymorphism are non-modifiable factors affecting inter and intrapatient variability. Among causes of graft loss, 50% are due to antibody-mediated rejection and non-adherence is responsible for about 47% of patients with antibody-mediated rejection. A non-adherence is a predictor of de novo DSA development in kidney transplantation. Non-adherence was an independent predictor of allograft failure following identification of the de novo DSA. Does prolonged release tacrolimus have lower intrapatient variability? Conversion from borograft to advagraft reduces intrapatient variability in tacrolimus area under the curve in a stable kidney transplant recipient. On the left side, the intrapatient area under the curve coefficient of variation of tacrolimus exposure is noted to be in immediate release tacrolimus, which is prograft, is about 14%, and the extended release tacrolimus, which is advagraft, is about 10%. On the right side of the graft, intrapatient area under the curve coefficient of variation of tacrolimus exposure by genotype is present uh, higher uh, on uh, non-expressor than in expressor of tacrolimus. Another source of variability is branded versus grand generic formulations. Generic tacrolimus in a randomized prospective crossover study in the elderly patients as special population. The area under the curve is noticed to be uh, lower in the original tacrolimus in comparison to the generic tacrolimus which is in the orange color. The percentage change in tacrolimus trap level, the impact of conversion from prograft to generic tacrolimus in liver and kidney transplantation, the graph on the uh, above uh, is that uh, for liver uh, transplantation and that on the bottom is related to kidney to, uh, renal transplantation. And the following switching between formulations, patients should be monitored to ensure systemic exposure is maintained. In a retrospective study, Stable adult kidney transplant patients were categorized into two groups, fixed and variable formulations, using the U.S. National Drug Code on the basis of tacrolimus formulation usage over the 12 months period. The study design was uh, found that uh, in this study, which is study which is conducted for 12 months, tacrolimus dose adjustment was found in fixed tacrolimus. Uh, regimen was 2.4% and for variable tacrolimus regimen 2.8%. They con concluded that a variable tacrolimus formula regimen was associated with a higher frequency of trap level measurements and a greater number of excursions in the trap level compared with a continuing and a fixed on a fixed formulation in this retrospective chart review study. It is a retrospective study. 
39 patients of generic post-transplantation and the control 159 patients who had been receiving brand tacrolimus since transplantation. The immunosuppressive regimen was standardized for both groups as alimtuzumab induction, three doses of steroid, tacrolimus, 0.1 milligram per kilogram per day, and the mycophenolic acid, 720 milligram twice a day. And target trap level for all patients was 10 to 12 nanogram per milli for the first three months, 8 to 10 nanogram per milli in the second three months, and 6 to 8 nanogram per milli for the remainder of the study period. Significant variability of trap was defined as an increase or decrease of about 20% on a stable dose requiring a dose in all patients. Conversion to single generic tacrolimus uh, will result in uh, the first year post transplantation tacrolimus dose adjustment and the mean level for the generic and the standard tacrolimus uh, group for uh, during the first three months, uh, the tacrolimus level for the generic group was 9.6% 9, 9 and for the brand 8.8%. And post-transplantation incidence of rejection type and degree of rejection during the first year after transplantation was uh, found to be 7.7% uh, for generic and 5.6% for the brand formulation. Conversion to single generic renal transplant unit generic group had greater drug variability. Generic group had more dose adjustment. Yearly institutional cost for the generic was lower than that for the brand form, but uh, hospital cost was about 652,000 uh, per year to treat rejection episodes. Greater incidence of rejection, 23% versus 10.2%. <clears throat> and they concluded that this government-driven attempt at cost saving may be applicable to non-critical medications, but this policy should be reconsidered for narrow therapeutic index medications such as acrolimus and other immunosuppressive medications. The European Medicines Agency stated that in advert unintentional or unsupervised switching between different oral formulations of tacrolimus with different release characteristics is unsafe, and this can lead to graft rejection or increased incidence of adverse reactions, including under or over immunosuppression. And the following conversion to any alternative formulation therapeutic drug monitoring should be performed and those adjustments made to ensure that systemic exposure to tacrolimus is maintained. The once daily prolonged release formulation of tacrolimus has been shown to improve adherence versus twice daily tacrolimus and non-adherence in transplant re uh, recipients has been associated with poor graft outcome. This study, Osaka study, optimization, optimizing immunosuppression after kidney transplantation, a multi-center for arm randomized open-label clinical study investigating optimizing those in a prograph at the graph-based immunosuppressive regimen in kidney transplant recipients. Four arms, tacrolimus twice daily, 0.2 milligram per kilogram, uh, plus MMF, plus, plus corticosteroid. Second arm, TAC, uh, twice daily, uh, once daily, 0.2 milligram per kilogram, MMF, plus uh, corticosteroid. Arm three, tacrolimus once daily, 0.3 milligram, plus MMF, plus corticosteroid. And the fourth arm, tacrolimus once daily, 0.2 milligram per kilogram plus MMF plus bezeliximab as induction, and the cyclosporin uh, as different regimen of uh, reduction or avoidance. The bilateral composite endpoint efficacy failure was defined as graft loss, biopsy confirmed acute rejection, or graft dysfunction at week 24, defined as estimated GFR less than 40 milli per minute per square meter. The biopsy proven acute rejection incidence was low and time to first incidence of biopsy co confirmed acute rejection and the severity of biopsy confirmed acute rejection were comparable across treatment arms. To summarize, an initial daily dose of 0.2 mg per kilogram at the graft-based therapy without induction was non-inferior to graft-based therapy for efficacy and safety. An increased starting dose of at the graft 0.3 mg per kilogram per day offered no efficacy advantage and the biopsy confirmed acute rejection was not increased in steroid avoidance arm, and the overall renal function was similar on TAC once daily and twice daily based regimen. 
Another study for conversion from prograph to advagraph is associated Conversion from prograph to advagraph is associated with beneficial renal effects over three years in stable kidney transplant patients. At three years, uh, prolonged release uh, tacrolimus was associated with lower serum creatinine level and higher GFR in, than in immediate release tech at baseline. And they suggest that improvement in renal function after conversion to advagraph is related to the reduction of the 24-hour tacrolimus area under the curve of exposure. To summarize, maintaining long-term graft and patient survival is a challenge in kidney transplantation. Improving intrapatient variability may reduce the risk of suboptimal immunosuppression and improve long-term outcome. Sources of intrapatient variability are pharmacogenetics, adherence, and switching between branded and generic formulations. Advagraph is the only formulation to demonstrate lower intrapatient variability compared to graft and a long-term follow-up Advagraph shows tendency for better renal function. And thank you.